Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I want to go back and take a look at a viewer game that was sent in that came out of this hyper-aggressive way that you can play against the Berlin defense. And this all came about because uh, a little bit less than a week ago, I put out a video on YouTube called I Turned the Berlin into the Most Aggressive Gambit Ever and Crushed Stockfish with It. And in that video, I had set myself a particularly tricky chess challenge. My goal was to take the most boring opening, or at least an opening that most people, when you think of boring openings, you immediately think Berlin defense, and to try to turn it into something hyper-aggressive, something that would actually be really fun to watch if, uh, if players did start playing in this crazy way. Now, it's really dubious. We're going to see. We're going to sacrifice a piece, and we're going to be playing for an all-out kingside attack. So I don't expect this to enter the top level any day soon, but I do think this is a particularly dangerous way to play against the Berlin. So I'm going to put out another video so that we can see how to take down a very strong Grandmaster using this uh, incredibly complicated system. Them. So let's back it up here just a minute. And this is the game that was sent in by Great Llama, who was playing a Grandmaster in a three minute game. Great Llama has the white pieces, and this is an hourly Super Blitz arena on leechess.org. So they played the Rui Lopez, and after knight f6, castles, knight takes e4, d4. We have kind of the starting position. This is like so many top level games, very popular stuff. And after knight to d6, here I was recommending the move. D takes E5. Obviously, uh, most high-level games actually go straight for this endgame that occurs after uh, bishop takes C6, D takes, D takes E5, and we swap these queens out, and we get this so-called Berlin endgame, where white will have a very, very slight advantage and, uh, and try to press for a little bit more from this position, but it's very boring, very dry. So what if instead I, uh, I proposed D takes E5? And after they take back the bishop, here is where the fun starts. Because this still is theory. There's still a ton of games from this position. But here I recommended the move rook to e1. And this is overtaking the, the previously only move in the position, which is pawn to a4. And you get to clap yourself on the back because, yes, we will notice that the knight has run out of squares. So, for example, you will have to uh, do something like this, where after we trade everything up, open the position up for all the bishops, uh, we can basically agree to withdraw because about 94% of all top-level games <laughs> that go here just end in a draw. It's really hard for either side to play for a win. So how are we going to juice it up here? Well, uh, coming back to this position after knight takes b5, we're going to play rook to e1. And at first, the computer is going to hate this move. And probably, possibly with good reason. But I think it is really tricky. The computer will say it's about minus 3 because, after all, uh, we're down a piece. But this e-pawn turns out to be a particularly strong, well-placed pawn. It now always is going to be very difficult in the future for black to break out with this d-pawn, because this would just allow us to uh, open the e-file. And if you have to waste a little bit of time, say, playing a6, which is the computer's top choice, we are going to be able to first chase this knight to the corner. So the knight has to go to a7. And yes, you are up a piece. This is very good for black. But now the attack comes, knight g5, followed by a quick queen to h5. This is the main idea. It becomes a little bit awkward for black. And we're going to see that in this game. We're actually going to see that the Grandmaster makes a, a relatively large mistake uh, coming up right here in the opening. So bishop to e7. So far, this is still following the game that I played against Stockfish. Queen h5. And here in the video... I did mention that g6 is actually the only move, and that was not played in this game. Uh, so we're going to come back and kind of take a look at what the Grandmaster played. But g6 is definitely the only way for black to continue. You can understand why black wouldn't, because this is a very weakening move. And if you put your bishop on e7, ideally you'd want to put this bishop over here, but... Uh, somehow there might be some sort of compensation in the dark squares. So my game against Stockfish continued like this. I went back to h3, and then overall the main plan is to dominate these dark squares. So something like knight to c3, this knight will be coming in, this knight can back up, or it also can head into f6. Uh, they're going to have this bishop coming to g5. Basically, all of white's future moves are just going to be about trying to dominate the dark squares. Now, I don't want to say that this is like winning for white. It's very possible that this is just losing, but it is at least very dangerous. So this is something that you guys can test out and let me know how it goes from here. But g6 is the way that black kind of must continue. 
But in this game, uh, black tried the move bishop takes g5. And this actually just loses immediately. So from here, white actually did an awesome job. Just a very masterful job demonstrating how dangerous this position can be. Because after bishop takes g5, uh, black has to make some very uncomfortable decisions. The only move that seems possible for black here is knight to e7 entering into this pin but now black is going to get a whole lot of pressure against the e7 square so knight to c3 was played this is an excellent move not only getting the knight off the back rank but we're also just preparing knight to d5 to add even more pressure and yeah just again it's it's very difficult i mean castling is always going to be scary when white has all these pieces kind of lingering around the king side the potential for a rook to come up and over uh, and it's also very difficult to play something like d6. Uh, if you ever play d6, you're just opening up the e-file, and our rook will be getting even more pressure on the e7 square. So black is actually just dead lost here. There's really nothing that uh, you can do. Uh, he tried knight a to c6. This seems very reasonable. You take the knight that was sort of sidelined out of the game, and you add a little bit more defense to the e7 square. But after knight to d5... Uh, I don't really know what even to recommend for Black. In the game, Black decided to castle, which <laughs> is, is really, really dangerous. Um, but I don't really know what the other options are. The computer says you should try playing h6 here. I don't know. Doesn't even really make a threat. You're not even threatening to take the bishop due to the pin on the h file. But uh, it's just a kind of a good indication that there's really not a lot Black can even consider here. But in the game... Uh, black decided to get castled and white here played a really good move maybe not even the absolute strongest move so here you can pause and you can kind of this is a very excellent attacking game so it's worth pausing uh, in a couple spots if you want to take a little bit more time to try to come up with the absolute best moves from here in the game white played a totally fine move rook to e3 threatening to bring this rook over possibly to g3 but most likely to h3 and just adding more attackers it, it's kind of difficult without a knight on f6 uh it's really hard for black to defend some of these critical scare squares especially the h7 square possibly even more deadly <clears throat> i mean everything kind of wins but possibly more deadly for white is even this move knight to f6 uh white can already contemplate sacrificing pieces creating a mating threat on the h7 square which if you make this threat obviously black will have to take the knight and this is just going to be dangerous after bishop takes f6 the game should be over pretty soon um if our queen ever sneaks in for example we'd be able to give a checkmate <laughs> this guy's coming over queen's coming in it looks it looks horrible maybe black can find some way to try to sacrifice a queen or something but this looks like whoops uh this looks like Black is just on the verge of death here. Uh, but instead, rook e3, totally strong move. Uh, very good choice by white. Now came knight takes d5. And this is a, a pretty good try by black. The idea is uh, we're mixing it up. <clears throat> the knight is coming to where it can attack the rook, but also giving white the opportunity to take the queen. And white here, again, played a very strong move. Uh, resisted the urge of taking the queen. If you just simply take this queen, knight takes e3 is at least not clear. Maybe this is good for white, but really a lot of the attack has uh, disappeared in a position like this. So obviously we can continue. We can move this away or we can take your knight or, or do whatever. But uh, I'd like that white wasn't distracted by the queen, just decided to take on d5. And now this knight is attacked. The queen is attacked. Look how strong all of these pieces are hovering around the uh, black position here. Black again had to re-enter another pin. So first there was one knight pinned on e7. Now the second knight has been forced into this self-pin. Uh, and white has so many good moves here. Um, yeah, there's so many good moves. I mean, d6, just attacking the pin piece seems good. Swinging the rook over seems good. Who knows, bishop f6 is probably also a very good move. Uh, white decided to play the move rook to h3. Very, very good. And after h6, again, probably so many different moves win for white. Um, d6 probably wins. Bishop f6 probably wins. Bishop takes h6 probably wins. Uh, in the game, it went bishop takes h6. Personally, I think I would have been kind of tempted to uh, to play a move like bishop to f6. I think this is kind of a, a nasty little move, and it's aesthetically very pleasing. 
Um, the point is obviously you can't take this bishop. If we ever get these open files, mate is just around the corner. And if you can't take our bishop, it's possible that we're actually going to be taking on g7. So the next move, whatever black does, might just be bishop takes g7, removing the defender of this h-pawn. Uh, but as it is, this also looks completely hopeless for, uh, for black. And you can't take the bishop, we've kind of seen. If you take the bishop, h-file is just uh, too wide open. This is going to be uh, a mate in one. So g6 was played. This is probably the, the best move. And here, white actually makes the biggest mistake in the game. An almost perfect game by white here. But uh, this is the one opportunity to potentially improve upon this play. Um, because white played queen to h4. And this looks all right, but it does potentially give black a chance to save the game with uh, knight to f5. So what should white have possibly done here? Um, there's a lot of good moves. There's actually like a lot of good squares. You can even play like rook g3. But I think queen f3 might be a particularly strong move. Just keeping this pawn where it is, keeping everything protected. And even though you might not be threatening queen to f6 with the idea of checkmating, because if you ever play queen to f6, knight to f5 will defend the square and, uh, and potentially try to win this bishop. But you, you might have another idea with white that could also be potentially quite strong of just bringing this bishop back to the f6 square, trying to threaten uh, rook to h8. So something like this could end up being particularly powerful for white. But in the game, we saw this unfortunate blemish, but really white is probably still in uh, full control here, but it's just not quite as clear now after knight to f5. Okay, so the queen went over to f4. And here, though, uh, even though white has made a, a small mistake, black gives it back immediately. There is only one move. So uh, you can pause your video here, try to play as black, see if you can defend correctly. I think it's really tough to play this position as black. There is one move that will put up some resistance here, but it's, it's really not that that easy to spot. Um, so before we show you what the, the Grandmaster did in the game, the only move for black is actually the move pawn to d6, which is, is probably pretty tough to play because, first of all, you really want to pick up this dark squared bishop. This guy is so scary because here we can grab the exchange, for example. This might actually be the strongest move for white, but it also is scary just to allow the bishop to live, allowing bishop to g5, bishop to f6. Uh, a lot of this seems particularly scary. Somehow here, though, black can uh, hope to hold. Um, but yeah, I mean, after bishop takes f8, uh, white is still doing very well. Instead, after queen to f4, what we saw in the game was knight takes h6. And I should point out, the grandmaster had about 20 seconds at this point, And our protagonist with the white pieces actually had a full two minutes. So yeah, it was a three-minute game. Uh, our protagonist spent about one minute here. And yeah, obviously, this is very unfortunate because queen takes h6. And now the game is simply over. So a huge shout out to Great Llama. I thought this was an excellently masterfully played game. Thank you so much for sending it in. It just shows kind of how powerful and dangerous this opening can really be. So yeah, keep sending me in your games and let me know, would you guys actually play this? Is this something you think could be played at the highest level? Uh, it, it's very, very powerful for white, especially if black has to walk a very narrow line. So thank you very much. And if you like all these new openings, that's what we do here on the channel. So, you know, make sure you subscribe and hit all the buttons and stuff and leave me some comments. I love it all. So uh, I'll see you guys for another video.